To find out more about what we just saw, let's talk about this concept of superconductivity. Now, normal resistors have a relationship between resistance and temperature. So here we have temperature in kelvins and the resistance in ohms. As the temperature decreases, metal conductors show a decrease in their resistance. Okay? And they keep going, but they never reach zero resistance. That's under normal circumstances and temperature. Superconductors, however, show a similar pattern, but they differ in one aspect. If we have a look at this graph here, we can see that uh, the implication is if we could keep making the temperature getting lower and lower and lower, then we may reach a point in which the resistance decreases to zero. And that's what happens with superconductors. So if we draw the same sort of graph, but then all of a sudden there will be a specific temperature at which its resistance drops to zero. When that happens, the material shows the property of superconductivity. And this temperature is known as the critical temperature. C sub, sorry, T sub C. So the critical temperature of the, the, semi, of the um, superconductor is one in which it shows zero resistance. So let's just write that down. implies that. It's not happening at the moment. And research was done to try and lower the temperature and it was found that with certain metals that they can show superconductivity properties and we'll look at that in a second. But let's now look at superconductors. So superconductors are substances which show the property of superconductivity. Right, so a similar pattern there. But then there is a temperature at which they exhibit superconductivity, where the resistance goes to zero. So Tc is the temperature at which resistance equals zero, and therefore it exhibits oops, superconductivity. A bit of squeak going on there. All right. And that is um, when we know that, um, that we have a superconductor when this happens. And we saw that just briefly before, which we're going to do again. And we're going to look at how and why that occurs. So take those notes. Um, I'll rub them off. And let's look at the different type of superconductors, type 1 and type 2. All right. See you in a sec. Okay. There's two types of superconductors. The first one is known as type 1. And the second is type 2. Okay. Now the thing is, is that with these, the type 1 was the ones that were first um, examined first, hence type 1, and they were metals. Okay. And they were also metal alloys. Right, now we're going to be continuing this down a whole page, so maybe start this at the top of a page, and uh, we'll put a line through there and we can just keep going down. I'm going to run out of room, so I'll rub it off, but we're going to try and see if we can do the two side by side. So here's type 1, metals and metal alloys, and if we have a look at some examples, we have aluminium. Now aluminium uh, has a critical temperature of 1.2 Kelvin which turns out to be minus 279, so 71.9. So absolute zero is minus 273.2, so it's very, very close, 1.2 Kelvin. Um, other than aluminium, we have mercury. Mercury has a critical temperature of a bit more than that, 4.2 Kelvin, which turns out to be minus 268.9 degrees Celsius. So these are very, very low. So they are metals that exhibit superconductivity. Their critical temperatures are very, very low. Not all metals will exhibit superconductivity, only certain types, right? So here we have some metals. Not very useful in terms of the temperature um, because it's very, very hard to get those temperatures. You have to use liquid helium, very expensive and very, very cold. So 
they show this property but not in terms of uh, common everyday use not very use usable so let's have a look at some other ones I'm going to rub that off so press pause get this down and uh, then we'll look at the advantages and disadvantages of type 1 now let's look at the advantages so the advantages of type 1 first of all is that they're easy to work with right so they're metals so therefore they're um, malleable and ductile so we can draw them into wires which is perfect if we want to do look at making circuit boards or we want to do incorporate them um, in transmission wires so ductile malleable perfect so they're easy to work with um, they are physically tough okay so they stand up to the rigors of um, environmental conditions etc so very good and the third one is that they're easily available or easily made all right so there are the advantages of this type one of the metals disadvantages as we said before disadvantages and we'll do this in a different color is they have very low critical temperatures so to get down to the critical temperatures, we said before that uh, we needed to use liquid helium. Very, very expensive, very, very cold, not very practical, a major disadvantage. The second disadvantage, um, oh, I guess, is we said, you know, we need liquid helium, right? So very low critical temperatures and we can only get that by liquid helium. So further research was done to see if they could find superconductors that happened at higher temperatures. Because theoretically, if we could find a superconductor that ha occurred at room temperature, that would be amazing because then all of a sudden now, we don't need to worry about cooling it down. Room temperature exu exhibits superconductivity and then we have all the advantages, which we're gonna be talking about later. But uh, you know, no, no, um, no loss of energy. And so, so computers would run so much more faster. You'd have 100% efficiency um, so, uh, you know, we'll talk about those later, but it would be absolutely incredible. So let's look at some um, features of type 2, because that's the one that we showed at the beginning, and that's the one we're going to do again in a sec. All right, so press pause, get these down, and I'll catch you in a sec. All right, now we're going to be looking at type 2. Now, type 2 superconductors are those that are made of oxides. They're also made of ceramics. Okay, and it's the ceramic one that we uh, are using today. All right, so the particular one we're looking at today is made up of yttrium, barium, and we have copper, and then oxide, if I can squeeze it in there. So yttrium, barium, copper oxide, ceramic. That has a critical temperature a lot higher than the others of 90 Kelvin which turns out to be minus 183 degrees Celsius. And so we use liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen has a boiling point of 100 and minus 196. And so therefore it is lower than this. So it cools it down to below its critical temperature, makes it superconductive. And it only stops becoming superconductive when the disc warms up again. Okay, when the nitrogen evaporates away and then the disc starts to warm up and therefore uh, it loses its superconductivity but that's the one that we're looking at today it's a ceramically based superconductor what are the advantages of type 2 so over here we can use liquid nitrogen which is readily available i mean the the, the air is um 78 percent nitrogen ish right so it's easily available, it's quite cheap, and so therefore, um, you know, it's nice and easy, so therefore it's an advantage. One of the disadvantages is, is that they are brittle. Okay, um, they're less workable. So therefore, um, they're not, duct not ductile or malleable, and therefore, they shatter and they're not going to be able to be drawn into wires. So that's a bit of a problem if we want to incorporate superconductors into wires. Back in the motors and generators topic, remember we talked about transmission wires going uh, long distances and the advantage is that you can have them under high voltage, therefore decrease power loss. 
And if you could incorporate superconductors into that, then that would decrease resistance and therefore that would significantly um, you know, in, improve the efficiency. However, we're finding out it is a bit of a problem. So we have to say with further advances in superconductors type 2, to make them more, more malleable, um, that can be allowed to be drawn into wires and therefore increase the efficiency of energy transfer. All right, so that's type two. All right, um, let's make it happen and then talk a little bit about the process or the phenomenon of this levitation, which is called the Meissner effect. Okay, all right, so pause, get it down, and, uh, and I'll see you in the next bit. All right, what we're going to be looking at here is the Meissner effect. And what is it, I hear you ask? Well, good, I'm about to tell you. It's a phenomenon that superconductors show uh, in which when they're cooled down below their critical temperature, they, re they repel external magnetic fields, and in doing so, they cause any magnet sitting on top to levitate. Okay, so it's a phenomenon that superconductors show when they are cooled below their critical temperature, so what does that mean in terms of a picture here? Well, here we have a superconductor, and I'm going to be draw. I'll draw another one here as well. So two superconductors. This one here is not at its critical temperature. So if it's not at the critical temperature, we can draw the magnetic fields going through it. The magnetic field lines, I should say. All right. So there's the magnetic field lines. This is not at its critical temperature. However, if we cool it down. This is at the critical temperature, um, and this means that the external magnetic fields are going to be repelled by superconductor. So they do not go in and through the superconductor. What that means, therefore, if we have a magnet that's sitting there, <coughs> of course that magnet has its magnetic fields going around this way, then it's going to be repelled upwards and levitate. We're going to talk a little bit more about what's going on in a second when I've got a bit more boardroom, but we're going to actually see the phenomenon now. <clears throat> so let's get some liquid nitrogen here. We pour the liquid nitrogen into our container here. All right, bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. <coughs> So it's cooling the superconductor down. You know when it's cooling things down that you get a lot of fog produced. When the superconductor or any material is at the same temperature of liquid nitrogen, you don't have the, uh, the fog produced. So it's very, very cool now. So you can probably hear that and also notice there's less fog. So we're at the critical temperature now, so let's get our magnet, let's place it over. Alright, so now it's floating, and I'll just put my tweezers underneath. Look at that, magic. It's a kind of magic. See, even Queen think it's magic. Alright, so it's floating and it's showing the Meissner effect.